Hello, everybody. I'm the Velvet Sparrow, and I am joined here by Heart Hero. What's giggity good, everybody? And we are back with another Katala Sojo. In this episode, we're going to be aiming for Emmy's route. Let's get into yeah. it. <laughs> Before you ask, I will be using a voice changer and a soundboard randomly. Yeah, he has one. I don't. So, what we're going to do is that we're going to be skipping through the shit we've already seen. Because who wants to read that shit again? Nobody. Mm -hmm. It's depressing. We're even going to be skipping the Kenji stuff because, I mean... Unfortunately. Yeah. He's funny, but he's not that funny. Yeah. So, uh... So when that big dude in the background does kind of look like an Oni Plays character. <clears throat> you like a character? You mean a character yeah. who belongs in, uh... You mean like a character who looks like he belongs in Smiling Friends? Well, I mean like back before Oni Plays did Smiling Friends, like some of his older animations. Right. Get out of my car now. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Get out of my car now. Okay, I remember that shit. Okay. Ah. Uh. So much. How do you spell the word chrysalis? Never mind, I found it. And I just need to put the word bitch after that. Yeah. Damn, we're speeding through this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it took us like an episode or so in order to get to that point. Oh, yeah, it did. Yeah. Uh, nostalgia. So let's see what happens when we play aggressively. Mm. She's either mocking me or trying to trick me. I have nothing else to lose, though, so I might as well try something different. If I spread out my force and try to control more territories, I could recoup the advantage. Shizune seems to focus on conquering whole nations. So maybe I can sacrifice my hold on continents to gain more small countries. It's worth a shot. Hell yeah. Revolutionary <laughs> ideas. A few turns later, I end up losing the game anyway. <laughs> Damn. So nothing we do nothing we do gets us a win. Yeah, she's better at this game than us. Maybe Kenji was right. Oh, oh, this actually isn't a scene we... Actually, no, we haven't seen this one before because we can't skip it. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. I win! I win! Yay! I'm changing up my Misha voice. I haven't voiced it in a while, so I'm gonna change up how I do it. I still need to translate like that. It was pretty clear. <laughs> Don't look so sad, Hichan. You were really giving it your best. That's what I thought. Sometimes your best just isn't good enough, though. If anyone knows that, it's me! You did very well for someone who just learned how to play today. Hichan, you attacked Iceland and North America at the same time. That's a very daring move. Chichan is impressed. The mark of great people is that they are daring and that they can follow through. You're already halfway there. Isn't that great, Hichan? That isn't enough, though. Just potential isn't enough. There's no point to potential if you don't know how to take the first step. And there is no point to that if you don't keep going. I want to see more. Drop your pants. <laughs> You're right, Chichan. But that's so demanding. Hmm. 
Shizune leans forward, suddenly looking a lot less playful and more like a, like a serious person I expected her to be from the start. Hmm. Hey, Chan, would you like to join the student council? Oh, for fuck's sake, not this again. She really doesn't like I know one time, of the rest. Mm. My thoughts exactly. It's only my second day of school, so I'm hesitant about committing to something so early. I haven't even taken a look at any other clubs yet. But spending time with Shizune and Misha doesn't seem like something I would hate. I still need more time to think about it before I decide to for sure. Maybe. I'll get back to you on it. Okay, Hichan. But I hope you're not just saying that so we don't feel bad. No, really. Really? Hey, Chad, if you're gonna say that, you're just saying that it's definitely the truth. And there, I can't... <clears throat> and there can't be any mistaking it. I know, I know. I guess, I guess I should have my revenge for losing, at the very least. Shijune smiles in that mis at that mis in a mischievous way that feels like twisting a the knife in the loss of my wound. In my wound of I swear, loss. every time I see that fucking face, it reminds me of the Rick and Morty lip thing. It does not look like a smile to me. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be a Neko Arc reference, though. I know, but it just looks like the fucking face from Rick and Morty they do every once in a while. Why, yes, this is a pipe bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I've spent far longer playing Risk than I expected. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Jeanne scratches her head and gestures to Misha. How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? There's a clock right there on the wall. It should be, unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, Shachan. Let me see. Okay, yeah, we've been through this shit. Surgeon. Oh, that was a different painting, never mind. I still have no idea why you think it looks like him. Cause it, it looks like him from that one scene, not like in t not like all the time, just from that one scene where he's like, ah, surgeon! That's what it looks like. Skipping. We're skipping. We're oh. tripping and we're dipping and we're hipping. Can I get a high five? Ah, yes, Kenji. You fucking degenerate. A lot of these are just up to up to our choices. E. Yeah, it's actually kind of smooth sailing for the most part. About as smooth sailing as getting tickets to the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. <laughs> Who lives it up? Hide up a lot oh. in the sea. Sponge. Oh, look at this! Okay. We got some actual choices. Nice. Okay, let's see. What are we choosing? All right, so. We get to go talk with Hanako. Go wait for Shizune and Misha to come to a decision. Go read my book. Okay. Wait, so. Read my book. I always do. I do what I always do when I don't know what to do. Like now. I've already started on one of the books I borrowed yesterday and took it with me to fit yeah, to school to fill the empty moments between classes. I find the page hmm. at, that I creased a corner of to mark the spot I, le I left yesterday night and pick up from there. Misha hmm. and Shizune are still arguing heatedly, probably about restaurants still. If I join them, I just get caught up in that, or worse, get grilled about joining the student council. Misha isn't speaking aloud since there is nobody who'd need to he hear what they're talking about. You want to know what I say to Misha's cons to Misha and Shizune consistently trying to get us to join the student council? Nuh uh, fuck you, me, nuh uh. Nuh uh. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna stop. The fuck you mean, nuh uh. Why does she tend to sign okay. things even when Shizune doesn't need to understand what's being said? Or even more strangely, when Shizune is not around at all? What an odd conflict of habits. I find it hard to focus on the book, and besides, lunch break beckons me to leave this, uh, the dullness of the classroom. 
I do so, heading down down for the cafeteria. Misha Ooh, Shizune, food. Yeah. Misha and Shizune may have come to a conclusion of one kind or another, follow my wake, though they're still talking in their animated fashion. Just around the corner of the hallway, something hits me in the chest with the force of a runaway train. Okay. Titties! Okay, yeah, we've seen most of this. Enemy combatant! Enemy... <laughs> oh my god. Because <laughs> he fucking hit you because he ran into you. Hello again. Ah, uh, Rin. Taking forever. <laughs> New adorable autistic wonder. Yes, I'll be more serious about my health. Yes, I promise, definitely. He studies me for a moment and then shrugs and smiling again. Okay, that's more like it. If you go to the school track tomorrow morning, you'll meet my spy, who probably has no qualms offering consolation to you if you just want to jog a bit. Consolation? Consultation. See you around. Bye, have a great night. I feel like my mouth is also a soundboard because I keep just making references to shit I don't think anyone's going to remember. We've spent the most time with Ren in this opening. Like, skipping all this makes me makes me see that. Yeah, I realize that t maybe the game was pushing for Ren to be canon or something. Maybe. Oh, you voice... I keep forgetting you're the one who voices Emmy. Yeah. Let's go, let's go, we're in luck now. Yeah. No, it's don't stop. Oh, I know, I was just trying to make a fun joke. What in the fuck was that? Whoa, what was that? I'm starting to think I don't actually need a goddamn uh, soundboard. Oh yeah, this fucking debate. That's absolute bullshit when you remember one of them is blind! Yeah. Chizune, you do know that the reason this girl is taking forever to do her paperwork is because she can't fucking see it! Yeah. I think for the most part, we're just going to skip the first acts again, unless, like, it's the festival part, because that's the one that has, like, the most changes. Alright. Because, like, everything's kind of on a set path for the most Okay, okay, this is the diverging point. Okay, give me a minute. I'm going <clears> to... <throat> give me a minute. I got to go check on Sean to make sure the taters ain't burning in the oven. I'm going to go grab some and then a slice of pizza. Robots, robots, pizza, well, robots, pop zones, everything drop. Robots, pop songs, everything stop. Robots, pop songs, robots, pop songs, robots, pop songs, everybody hot in the wrong place, about to get mean mug, fuck it. Kill him with the kindness, hit him with the steam hug, fan to hit this erection it. When I expect, respect, and respect and shit, gone. Gonna hit you, what about you? Out you, out in the time with the smile. Gonna, gonna. God damn it, why can't I remember the fucking. Uh... Editor Thomas, if you leave this in, I'll be your best friend. What? Oh shit, you're back? Yeah, uh, nothing. Back. Uh, nothing. What'd you just do? Nothing, I did nothing. You'll see when you're editing. Okay. Editor Thomas will see it. You won't. Okay. Will I be able to do more? <laughs> just go for it! Yeah! Don't stop, don't stop, we're in luck now. Don't stop, we're gonna clap some cheeks. <laughs> I always just imagine that Emmy, that if this game ever got remade, they would just make Emmy thick as fuck. Yeah. With like a muscular ass. Yeah. I mean, she runs everywhere. Yeah. Kind of like how I walk everywhere, although I do not have an ass. What am I doing here? I'm really just going to fold and let Emmy pull ahead. I speed up. Second lap's done quickly, and without even considering it, I keep going. Emmy looks back. Gotta over. go fast! <laughs> Amy looks back over her shoulder at me and grins. Still going? When? Uh, why you? I think I'm out of shape. Yeah, you're already doing a good enough job of that. Amy laughs without, without breaking her stride and no less, and speeds up even more. 
Well, this is how we're going to play things. I increase my own what pace I as well. Is that Sorry. What? Nothing. Nothing. That was <clears throat> that was a that was an accident. That was an accident. I heard of Vegeta. What's going on? Nothing. I was trying to play a song. Not not a song. Uh, a sound, but I accidentally chose the wrong one. So ignore it, please. Increase my own pace as well. I can feel my lungs burning, and my legs are starting to question just what the hell I'm, I think I'm doing. Lactic acid screams in my muscles, but I close my ears. I can't let myself fall behind, because that would be a loss. The rational voice in my head inquires mildly just when we started playing, the, playing a game. I'd answer it, but I'm having a lot of trouble thinking at present. She is so fast. I think we're gonna get, dude. I think we're gonna get copyright struck if you keep using that thing. Okay, that was an actual copyrighted sound. I should have hit no copyright. My bad. Yeah, it's like it's like a string pulling at my chest, choking a choking feeling of narrowness and pain. Before I can think of anything else, then oh shit, the track disappears from under my feet. I stumble, one hand shooting down the clutch at my chest, the other hitting the track to keep me from falling on my face. Amy rolls around and her eyes widen. Hassel! She yells at me, sprinting from the other side of the track. What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing. Am I at, did the clapping of my ass cheeks knock you over? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. It's just... Keep your breathing steady. Calm down. Don't panic. Don't panic. Do you need me to get the nurse? I close my eyes, shutting out the outside world. My heart struggles to regain its rhythm. Slowly, the pain in my chest begins to subside. Soon so, can you hear me? What the fuck are you doing? We are Venom. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I guess that's not, that does really work here. As soon as it's gone, like nothing happened. It was... Nothing? No, something happened here. I open my eyes again and glance at a very worried Emmy. I think I'm fine. Her voice sounds weird even to myself. Oddly even and matter of fact. Makes Emmy frown. I don't think you are. She's... She seems to come to a decision and nods to herself. Right, you're coming with me. You gotta see the nurse. Emmy grabs my arm and drags me up. I feel a bit wobbly, but I refuse to sh is the shoulder Emmy offers for support. Honestly, I'm a little ashamed at my own weakness. I'd really rather not have Emmy concerned about me, but it seems to be too late. Heck. I'd really rather not have anyone concerned about my condition, though at this point, it seems to be too late for that as well. I'd like to be able to deal with the whole thing on my own, without being a bother to anyone else. While I'm wishing for things, I'd rather not have this condition in the first place. Nurse! Mm -hmm. Amy crashes into his office without knocking, but it doesn't alarm the nurse in the least. Morning, sunshine. What's up? Sunshine? Anyway, he calmly sips from his coffee mug and lays it down after following Emmy's gaze is to be looming in the doorway. So, who brings you here? You're running and he stumbled over and started grabbing at his chest and I thought I'd come and get you and I'd make him wait. Easy there, Emmy, calm down. So, what happened? I don't know, you were running, and my chest started hurting like, the, like that time before, but it went away after a few seconds. It was just a flutter or something. And then I heard this weird symbiote voice in the back of my head. It said, we are Venom. Nurse. Okay, I guess his joke isn't as funny as I thought it was. Yeah. The nurse frowns, as if to say, as if to say that just a flutter was some kind of oxymoron. I didn't mean this when I suggested to get some exercise. You've got to be more careful, Sal. I was being careful. I just come to think of it, I just got into a race with a member of the track team. Doesn't seem as well reasoned as I thought it would. You just what? That's. I was racing Emmy. 
Emmy, is this true? Emmy fidgets, looking adorably contrite. Uh, well... Finally, she can't seem to bring herself to say it aloud and merely nods. The nurse sighs and rubs, his forehead, and rubs at his forehead with one hand tiredly. Emmy, you've got to be more sensitive to the limits of others. I don't know if he told you, but Hasao has a bad heart. And getting him to race you is incredibly irresponsible. Uh, actually, I started it. The nurse is stunned by my statement. You what? I'm trying to take oh, oh my you, god. Play, if you have it, play it. <clears throat> Let me just see if I can pull... You're going to have to edit it, because I, I, I turned the voice bot off. You're going to have to edit it. You what? <laughs> <laughs> You're just running, and Emmy started to pull away. And so I uh, sped up to catch up with her. The nurse, <laughs> the, the nurse stares at the ceiling, mutters a prayer or for patience to some god or another, and looks back down at the both of us. So you're both stupid. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's a comfort, I guess. <laughs> but come on, Hassau. I'm gonna make sure your heart's not going to explode or something. Ah, yeah, shit, I gotta go check on this chicken. You keep going. Yeah. I dutifully obey and follow him to the adjacent room where we ascertain that I am, in fact, not going to keel over and die. So how does it feel? I don't know. Nothing much. I'm tired, but it might just be from the exercise. You should stay here for a few hours and rest. We'll see how you feel after that. I'm not going to object, so I lie down in the infirmary bed. A thoroughly miserable Emmy comes in after getting an earful from the nurse in the other room. I couldn't hear what he said through the closed door, but I'm sure it wasn't pleasantries. Look, I'm really, really sorry. I should have been more careful. Hey, you didn't know. It's not your fault. She looks awfully down and sorry, and my reassurance, and my reassurance is don't do anything much to cheer her up. I want to make it up to you. Again, with that decisive nod. So, you have to come to lunch with me. I bring it for you, okay? Something really, really good. I start with a you don't have to, but then shut up and just nod at her when I see her face. Good. We meet on the roof. We? Oui. Yep, weather's nice now. So, Ruth, this is a great spot for lunch, you know? I see. You'll come, right? You wouldn't deny me the chance to make it up to you. Of course not. Great! See you there! I stay afloat somewhere between asleep and awake, feeling completely drained. Not only my body, but all of me is limp and paralyzed, apart from my senses. I swallow with difficulty to then try to lie as still as I can. I just lost my dog. Oh. Which, in this state, is not a very hard thing to do. <clears throat> the nurse is shuffling around on the other side of the curtains he drew to give me privacy. I can see his shadow shifting about in the moon and the sunlight. He's opened the window of his office. It's windy outside. The clean white curtains flutter in the breeze in a heavy, lazy motion, like waves. Light, sh light sifts through them slowly, absorbing half into the fabric. I close my eyes. His... The breeze on my face feels like the soft fabric of the curtains. I listen to the sound of my heartbeat for a moment, trying to shut out the sound of the nurse tapping away on his computer and my own heavy breathing. It's steady. My heart's a stereo. It beats for you, so listen close. Damn it. Not even a week I end up like this again. I really screwed up this time. Should have known better than to play the half-baked sports star or in front of a real one. Uh, and why did I try to act brave? Like that heart flutter was no big deal. Even when it was obvious that it was. It was just a reflex. To push it away, to keep it inside. I didn't want it to happen. I didn't want Emmy to see it. Ugh. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I have to be more careful or I'll end up in the hospital again. Or worse. The morgue. That's my final thought before I gave in to the, ti into the tiredness. I 
I fell asleep. For how long? What time is it? I'm feeling a little lightheaded and I keep blinking compulsively. Pushing the curtains aside, I squint my eyes against the unfiltered light pouring in from the window. The texture of the canvas feels like feels nothing like the wind did before. The nurse looks up from his work, sitting exactly where he, he was before. How are you feeling? I can't really tell, so I don't answer anything. I'm feeling kind of groggy from falling asleep at such a weird time. Hopefully I don't look too weird. What time is it? Me croaking the question to gain some orientation, the nurse looking at his wristwatch before answering. Things seem to happen in slow motion. Quarter past ten. I try to think for a moment what that means, but I'm not really sure. You didn't answer my question, Asao. Oh, fine. Climb down from that bed, then. Let's see how you're doing. Don't. I don't. I try to do exactly that, only to sway dizzily when I move too fast. The nurse moves to support me by me by an arm in size. Stand up too quickly is what I was going to say. Sit. Just sit there. I'll check your pressure to make sure. My good intentions sure lasted for a long time. I shut up, embarrassed with myself, while the nurse gets busy with an old-fashioned contraption on my arm. On my arm. After a couple minutes, he puts it away, looking neither pleased nor unhappy. You're alright. Head stop spinning? Yeah. Good. And how are the contents doing? You didn't show very good judgment out there, Hassel. I swallowed, though the retort I was going to make. It's what I was thinking myself, but hearing it stated by somebody else makes me want to protest. What he's saying is not pleasant to hear. It doesn't make him any less right. No, sir. He nods, looking as, as neutral as he was before. It would be easy to be angry at him if he said, told you so, or something, but he doesn't. I can try to help you with your... I can try to help you keep your health, but ultimately the last call lies with you. Hopefully this little episode will be something that'll remind you of that. Here, a note for your teacher, to avoid interrogation. I take the slip of paper he's offering and, and make my leave as I can't think of anything else to say, nor even really want to do. Stay out of trouble, hear me? I don't think it was anything but a scare, but next time could be different. I hear ya. There's some way to get the school buildings being straight there is some way to get to the school building straight from the auxiliary building but I'm not keen to find out and possibly get lost so I go out from the exit I know works I stop at the stairs of the auxiliary building deliberating for a moment between going to the dorms to get my books and stuff or go and going straight to class and going straight away to, to the class the sun stings my eyes so I head towards the dorms the halls are quiet as the courtyard was so natch Naturally, so since everyone is in class, I knock at the door or a 3-3 and push the door open when Mudo calls from the other side, all the while ignoring that fucking painting that seems like it supports Autism Speaks. It really does look... Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, that's a better joke than... I am a surgeon. Yeah, you're going to need to find new ones because I'm not going to have you be making that for the other four routes. Fine. It's already gotten old, dude. Fine. Yeah, you better. Surgeon. I'm sorry, Mr. Flan, but I am a sturgeon. <laughs> sorry, I'm late. Fifteen pairs of eyes turn to me. Good morning, Nikai. No, that's you. Don't I voice? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Nikai. I was trying to make... You know, for some reason, like... I've been, like, seeing a couple of clips of uh, My Hero Academia. The guy who plays Aizawa would be perfect for Mudo. He does kind of he, he does kind of look like an Aizawa type. He looks like a less depressed Aizawa. Although I don't think... I don't really understand how Aizawa can be depressed considering he's got the best daughter in the goddamn franchise. <laughs> Airy. My quirk can erase other quirks. My quirk can make other people ten times more powerful. Yeah, I, that is that is the perfect father daughter dynamic though. I'm a lot of people's fetish. I'm some people's fetish. I have a really impractical costume. Hmm. Mudo seems, seems to be somewhat confounded by my coming in late, as if I interrupted his flow or something. 
judging from the rambling lectures his classes tend to be, that might be the case. I pass him the note the nurse gave me. Minato takes it with a nod and reads it quickly. He lifts his eyebrows and gives me some kind of a stern look, but doesn't say anything. Just nods solemnly again. I shrug and he gestures at me to run along, so I naturally do. The class goes on lazily. I think I'm starting to get into the rhythm of the school. I've even stopped worrying about taking notes and being overly attentive. First days I was pretty high strung in class. Oh, I remember this. Okay. Normally I'd join the, fl the flow and grab a lunch myself, but the day is different. Today I've been invited to lunch on the roof. Not location, but that's where I was told to go. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I managed to find shelter from the storm and leave in the lee of the classroom indoor. Eventually, the torrent subsides, and I step tentatively out into the hallway. Hey, where I see a where I see a portrait of Norman Bates. And you don't get it. I get it. No, you don't. It ain't making me laugh, but I get it. Uh, that is something that he put in that fucking hotel. Mm -hmm. That's weird enough. Only to be met by Emmy, who comes flouching down the hallway like a cannonball. Wait, it's a motel, not a hotel. Oh, yeah, right. Hey, hi, Sal. Great timing. I have super extra lunch today, as promised. Let's go upstairs. Stairway to the roof is a little dilapidated, but it's clearly been used recently. At the top of the dilapidated. stairs... Dilapidated. At the top of the stairs is a door complete with a missing padlock. I wonder who the intrepid individual was that removed the lock. Let's see, we're gonna... Okay, shit we, we've already seen. Ba 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 ba. Feeling utterly drained, I head to my room to read the books I borrowed. There's been enough action and excitement for one day already. The first is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Another story, of course, but I've never actually read the original book. Just as trippy as I remember the story to be, with the wacky characters and nonsense plot. I start thinking to myself as some kind of Alice too, haplessly tumbling down the rabbit hole into this cripple wonderland. Okay, that's a rather strong expression, but still, the isolated location, the overt way the school accommodates, leads to absolutely everything is unsettling. It is like another world. I wonder why I can't shake the feeling of being an outsider like Alice, despite most everyone being so hospitable and friendly with me. Turning another page, my mind starts drifting further away from the book. It's quiet. I can hear my heartbeat thumping against the fabric of my shirt. For some reason, it makes me feel really bad like it has since that time in the forest with Iwanako. Like I was locked in a cage with something nasty and scary. Yeah. I put the book down for a while and stare at the ceiling, taking my time to shake off the feeling. 200 pages later, I fall asleep. Hello again, old friend. You're talking to the title screen? I'm talking to the intermission screen. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I just wanted to throw a single fart joke in at least once. Mudo stands in the hallway, scratching his head as he works out what he's trying to say. Not knowing what's going on, I wait silently. <clears throat> I heard from the school's head nurse that you had an accident the other day. Ah, so it's about that. Well, kind of. But it's not anything to be worried about. Yes, yes it is. You probably say anything that can endanger you. Yes, yes it is. Anything that can endanger your health is something to be worried about. We try our best here to prepare you for life here. Sorry. We try our best to prepare you for life here. Part of that involves knowing your limits and how to work around them. Like that dear Kenji boy. For some reason, he's deathly afraid of women. So we make sure to keep him... <laughs> But we make sure to tell him every time he's walking around to pretend everybody has a penis. 
It doesn't. It would help. be remiss. It doesn't at all. It would be remiss of me if I didn't speak up about this. All right, I get it. I'm sorry. Mudo closes his eyes in frustration, and I realize that this probably wasn't the best thing to say. Something tells me that you're not sorry. Pretend as much as you want, but this isn't a normal school. We've got autistic people in here. A lot of people have put in a lot of time, effort, and money to make sure that you and every other student here can have the same level of education as your peers. For you to abuse that by throwing out advice, especially medical advice, is a is plain selfish. I'm not quite sure if this is actually how he feels or if it's some act he's practiced many times to guilt trip students into doing the right thing. Either way, it's working. I understand. This is all new to me, and I apologize. I know my limits now, and I'll be sticking to them. Middle appears to lighten up a little, satisfied that his message has been received. Go so then, on to my next question. How are you finding your studies? I understand you were laid up for a while. We're not too far ahead, are we? I don't really think so. I tried to keep up when I was in the hospital, so it hasn't been too hard. Mudo taps his chin and raises an eyebrow as he absorbs this information. Is that so? I suppose there are still students out there who realize the importance of learning. Wait, actually, I got another idea. What? Okay, not just the guy who plays Aizawa, but what about Ron Perlman? I can't really do a Ron Perlman. I don't think I can. I don't think I can make a caveman voice. No, no, no. You know Ron Perlman played Danny Phantom's teacher, right? Yes, I know Ron Perlman played Danny Phantom's teacher, all right? But at the end of the day, I'm trying to sound sexy with this dude, all right? Ron you know, Perlman give him a good old-fashioned... Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to give him a good old-fashioned... What? What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hey, okay, you're lucky because you get to dick around the soundboard and I have to play the game. <laughs> so shut up and get ready for another ass kicking. <laughs> Mr. Phantom, I'm Mr. Fenton, I'm pretty sure we what we do here in school is actually pay attention to the class. No, we yes, don't. instead of just looking at your goth girlfriend's pointy titties. <laughs> Why is that piece of her hair floating above her head? <laughs> Wait, god damn it, you called it out, now I can't stop seeing it anymore. God fucking hell. That's something I noticed when I first watched the show, dude. I mean, I noticed it, but I tried to ignore it, but I couldn't stop seeing it until later on. But now that you've called it out, every time I watch the show, I'm gonna see it. Her hair is floating. God damn it. Her hair is possessed. Is <laughs> possessed by the soul of a drunk barber. A drunk barber? Ugh. You're a drunk barber. You already read this? Yes. Okay. I wouldn't go that far. I was only trying to keep myself occupied in my little life support prison. Well, yeah. You gotta keep up with these things, right? That's exactly it. One wrong move in this world and you're left behind, right? Like that Nicolas Cage movie about Christianity. Right. I don't want that to happen. No, you wouldn't. Every week there's a new scientific discovery. Most of them mean nothing to the lay person. But any one of them could be the key to the next big thing. I'll keep that in mind. It's obvious that Mudo's serious talk is over and he's gone back to a standard, slightly scatterbrained approach to life. I think, in hindsight, that I prefer him this way. He's slightly more predictable in his unpredictability. Hmm. Well then, I think that's all I really had to say. Let's get back inside, shall we? My relief at that suggestion is insurmountable. Sure, you're the boss, right? Mudo pauses for a moment. I don't think any of my students have ever said this to me before. For an instant, I consider yep. replying to this, but something deeper than me tells me to shut my mouth and get back to the classroom. A few of the students jump at the sound of the door, rapidly trying to pretend that they were working on the questions on the board. Some don't even bother, their, he their heads slumped on the desk as they nap. 
Thankfully, it would appear that Mudo does not even notice them. <laughs> Sorry. He returns to his yep. desk. And... What the fuck was that? A problem. He returns hmm. to his desk and retrieves a scientific journal from one of the drawers. I guess I got to him there. The class returns to the near silence that Mudo and I are left in before our chat. Mixed feelings of tiredness and anticipation buzz around the room. Everyone here is either waiting for a chance to rest or the chance to get their last minute preparations underway. The clock on the wall slowly ticks the remaining class time away until finally the bells cry out, ending in the torment. Before you all leave, I expect the answer for those problems by Monday. Class size is one, instantly regretting slacking off, but still acutely aware of the more pressing issues at hand. The classroom empties in the blink in a blink as everyone rushes to their last minute festival preparations. I stay behind and quickly try to finish the questions I so I don't have to bother with it over the rest of the weekend with the festival and all tomorrow. Apart from me, Hanako is the only one left, obviously waiting for Lily. Mm. It's weird that Lily comes all the way to our classroom to pick her up. I expect that moving around is at least nominally harder for her than it is for Hanako. But it's none of my business, so and I naturally don't ask about it from her. Despite the relative proximity of our seats, neither tries to strike up a conversation about that or anything else. It's, so an oppressive silence falls upon the classroom. Time passes in silence, maybe probably just 15 minutes or so, but it feels longer. I turn the pages of my notebook, Hanako turns the page of a novel she's reading. And let's get the fuck out of this shit! God. Yeah, I wish. Oh, there, shit, we, yeah, yeah, I wish there was like an actual dialogue color option, so we know what you did or what we didn't. Because I'm starting to think I'm actually skipping through shit that we need. Hmm. Hold on. What happens if I press skip mode again? It doesn't do anything. Okay. I open my mouth to say that that actually we're both we're not both needed for such a simple task like finding another pot of Prussian blue. But Emmy's already grabbed my arm and started dragging me off. I wave to Ren, who doesn't seem to have noticed that the two of us are leaving. Well, she'll notice when, this when she goes for her Prussian blue and finds out it's still not there. Maybe. Probably not, actually. Well, I'm busy thinking of how weird Ren is. Emmy's been dragging me back to the art classroom. I feel myself starting to run out of breath. What's the rush? Huh? Emmy's giving me an appraising look as if she's trying to figure something out. It's just that you seem to be in a hurry. Not sure I can keep up. Comprehension dawns on her face. <laughs> You're not out of breath, are you? Almost an accusing playfulness to her tone. I'm tempted to deny it, but then I realize I'm obviously that I've been breathing heavy since we stopped. I guess it's kind of obvious. A little. Not everyone can be in shape, you know. It takes all kinds, right? Emmy frowns. No, it's not a particularly good frown. That is, I should get in shape? Not that I hadn't already decided to try for that. After that flutter on the track, I figured there's a real need to get in some sort of running habit. I was, after all, feeling pretty good until I had my false alarm. Well, actually, I wasn't. But it was... fun? Meanwhile, my comment seems to have helped Emmy come to some sort of decision. Well, that's it then. She gives me a serious look. You're joining me. I beg your pardon. In the mornings, you and I are now running partners. I've got a... Oh, I got a routine all planned out, in fact. She produces a crumpled sheet of paper. I've got it right here with me. I take the sheet of paper and give it a once-over. Times, dates, laps, all laid out. Slow increase from just a few laps a day to... My God, does she expect me to have running marathons? Where did she find the time to get all this together? How long has she been planning this, anyway? 
You've been planning this. A little. But it's really the nurse's idea. He told me to keep an eye on you to make sure you exercise like he told you to. A vast conspiracy. Maybe Kenji's onto something here. This seems a bit much for just keeping an eye on me. Well, to be honest, I've been trying to find a running partner in the mornings for a while now. My god, Kenji, if only you could see the scheme unfolding! What do you need a partner for, anyway? It's easier to keep a workout if you're not the only one doing it. Isn't that obvious? You're less likely to quit if someone else is counting on you to be there, right? I see. This only, and this won't only keep you running, but it'll make sure that I keep running as well. Meaning that I'll be obeying the nurse. And I'll be keeping an eye on you just like he asked. You caught on quick, Asal. And if I refuse? I have no intention of refusing, of course. But I've got to at least put up a token resistance to such a masterfully executed plan. Well, if you, if you refuse, I'd have to pout. And you'd have to live with being the guy who made Emi e Ibarazaki pout. And you don't want that on your conscience, do you? As if to demonstrate, Emi begins pouting. It's the most adorable, heart-wrenching thing I've ever seen. Okay, I'll do it! Just don't do that! I feel like I just hit a puppy. So it's settled, right? You're going to be my running... You're going to be my running partner? Follow the workout? And the dietary plan? Dietary plan? Yeah, the dietary plan. You gotta eat Bitch, you ain't stopping me for eating no burgers. Fuck off! Unless yeah. I'm eating your buns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta eat healthy if you're gonna get in shape, you know. I examine Fuck the workout. That. I examine the workout routine closely. I don't see a dietary plan on here. Oh right, I forgot to give that to you. Another crumpled sheet of paper is produced and handed over, somewhat less detailed. I had the nurse help me come up with it. The amount of dedication that that nurse has to keeping me in good health is pretty overwhelming. I don't know how many, many school nurses would get one of their students to spy on me, much less come up with a dietary plan. Then again, I guess I'm not in a normal school. Maybe that's not such a bad thing. God, why is my arm so fucking... I need to start using lotion. And I got goddamn alligator skin, I swear. I want McDonald's. Shut up! <laughs> and then, this dietary plan seems to cut out just about everything that'll be offered at the festival tomorrow. Hmm. So when is our running start? After the festival. Right after? What if I have something to eat there? I can get a stomachache, you know? I mean the days after the festival. I knew that. Wasn't there something we were supposed to be doing? Oh, I guess we should get that paint for Ren, huh? Oh no, it slipped my mind! By the time and we get the paint to the time we get that paint and get back to the mural, Ren's already wandered off. Oh well. I mean I both decide to part ways there. Yeah, leaving the paint on the ground. Ren will find it. Whenever she comes back, anyway. Festival's mm. tomorrow. I'm actually a little excited for it. At the same time, the week's left me pretty feeling pretty tired, so I read a little and then go to bed. Oh, no, I can't eat that. That's glue. Wait, what the f- You're trying to eat glue? There's like- There's a- I don't know, I found like a- I don't know, a, like a crunchy looking thing. And on my desk, I thought it was something I dropped. In your first, in your first instinct was to eat it. Yes. The next day, I it was. <laughs> the next day, I wake up feeling a little lightheaded. It's almost noon already. Sleeping late is fine since it's a Sunday and there are no classes. Not just a Sunday though, but the festival as well. From my window, I can already see some people at a soba booth slinging noodles into, onto plates for people with a craving for low-quality food. And we'll just skip a little bit further through this. Wonder. Kind of hungry. But I made this deal to try to take better care of myself. Be healthier, you know? I don't know if I should steer clear of the takoyaki, but head straight in. Mm. 
<clears throat> Deal? Sounds ominous. So what are you getting in return? Nothing, I guess. It's not that kind of deal. You know, Emmy from our year, I kind of, we kind of agreed to watch each other's backs and. The best scream I could come up with. Are you trying to find a soundboard thing? No. You just can't. I just, I just yeah, I just did the Kenji scream. I couldn't hear you. Oh, I think my mic peaked. Holy shit. I the shrill scream and the expression of abject terror on Kenji's face chill my blood. It's as if I told a Catholic priest I sold my soul to the devil. Oh! Uh, ha! You sold your soul to the devil and didn't get anything in return? What the hell is wrong with you, man? Do you know who you're dealing with? She's a public health danger. Do you know how many people she sends to the hospital monthly with her carelessly placed flag tackles? Carefully placed. Carefully placed flag tackles? She's a fucking bullet bill in Mario Kart, God damn it! She's one of them, a key player in the vast conspiracy that aims for the complete submission of everything that is manly. We'll, we already lost Star Wars, motherfucker! And Indiana Jones! And Ghostbusters! We lost Ghostbusters long ago. It was the first casualty, and now we're slowly losing the MCU. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I trusted in your judgment, man. I thought you were, I thought we were brothers. I thought we were like Hiccup and that guy from the TV show. You have to call it off before it's too late. It's festival too. It's just one of their ploys. They fatten us up. They shrink our penises. <laughs> <laughs> and then they divorce us and steal our money. He fingers his scarf nervously, faster and faster, like he's trying to start a fire. And then slowly begins to calm down once the panic attack finishes running its course. <laughs> God, I oh miss Kenji. I do too, playing this guy is so fucking hilarious. I'm gonna have to find some place to hide in. A safe haven. <laughs> and then knock the lights out of myself so that I don't have to experience this horrible day. I have the perfect thing for that. I must prepare now. Don't go to the festival. Okay. Mm -hmm. Later, dude. The door slowly closes with a low creak and I don't know how to feel about what Kenji just said. It's kind of unsettling and now I start to feel doubtful myself. Should I bother going? I've got a book I've been meaning to read. Something about an underground postal system that may or may not exist. It's short, too. I could finish it in a day. But, that, but would that be a good way to spend my time? Well, yeah, definitely. Probably not. Yeah. But I suppose it would be probably be a better idea to head outside. See the festival. Try to integrate with all the other sideshow acts. Honestly, I should have at least made an attempt to keep up with that somewhat friendly personality I've had the past week. Maybe get something to eat, my stomach suggests. It's almost lunchtime. I could grab something from one of the stalls outside. I'm soon outside, surrounded by various students and people who may or may not be parents. Skipping the seat. Nope, this is all new shit. Alright, nice. Once that festival crap begins, that's when we get into the actual original content. I'm pretty sure. So, I'm guessing from the later things from here on out, it's just select the right dialogue options. Actually, you know what? If that's the case, like, when we uh, get to... I guess we should do uh, Shizune's route next. Wait. I don't know. What do you want to do? Uh, I guess we could just do Shizune's route after we do Emmy's. That yeah. would be perfect. Yeah, and then Lily's, and then Hanako's, and then we get the, and then the worst ending. Yeah. If I can find a way to trigger it. Hmm. As soon as I'm outside, I'm surrounded by students and people who may or may not be their parents. Every so often I catch a glimpse of someone who clearly just came up from town for the promise of a festival. They're, they're easy to spot. The ones that can't stop staring. And behind their eyes you can tell they're thinking, now what's wrong with this one? 
I'm Damn! Like, I almost want to yell at them. Holy shit! Hisao's not being ableist in the early wow. game? But I would like to beat the shit out of these motherfuckers. Yeah, but I'm guessing the reason why is because Hisao got his ass humbled by a girl in stilts. Heh. <laughs> But got humbled by a cosplayer of um, Chell from Portal. But doesn't Chell also have stilts? Uh, she has uh, no. She has like extra. She has like leg guards that have like attached jumping stilts on them. She still has regular legs. Oh, okay. Never mind then. I mean, like, well, technically, originally the members of Star Fox all had like prosthetic legs. Yeah, they had their legs cut off and replaced with metal. Yeah, and then that got retconned, and now they're just wearing big boots. Yeah. I'm about to go check out the potatoes. You keep going. All right. But at the same time, can I deny what I've been doing? That I've been doing the same thing all week. I believe something like disgust sweeps over me, guilt for my own narrow-mindedness. Ah, oh, sit. Hold on. Josh. Josh, get back here. There's a thing of Heinz ketchup over here, Josh. God, look at all the food! Yeah. The only time I ever got something like this is whenever I went to Fedmark. Oh, man. Ooh, you know what I think I'm gonna order? What? That nice, that nice little lady there in the bottom right corner. Ugh, she doesn't come with anything. Um, God damn it. Not even a soda. I mean, this is probably soda over here because of how low priced it is. True. I true. think this is takoyaki. These are probably, uh... Yeah, these are hot dog skewer things. I think this, these might be soba noodles or something. Mmm, soba. I, I want some soba now. I'm getting Captain D's. What? I said I'm getting some Captain D's. I'm ordering it. Captain D's. Yep. And if my and if my baby brother come here and ask for some, I'm gonna say, "Well, you can have some of these nuts." He's always asking my for my fucking food. <laughs> I push the thoughts aside, concentrating on the pangs of hunger that burn my guts like a wildfire. The scent of something fried leads me to the promised land where I can get some lunch. I'm just getting my order when a loud voice interrupts me. Hey, what the hell hey, are you doing? Oh, sorry, that's you. Have it. In bre I have lunch. Breakfast? You mean you just got up? Uh, suddenly sleeping all morning feels like a crime. No, I meant lunch. Honest. She's not buying it. Brunch? That's not a healthy breakfast at all. She snatches my food out of my hand and glares at me. What the hell is this girl doing? Hey, that's my breakfast! What happened to it being your lunch? That's my... Whatever, it's my food. Emmy places her hand on her, her hands on her hips and begins lecturing me. Did you really forget your dietary plan already? You need to be more conscious of your health, Hassau. What about your heart? My heart's fine the way it is, mostly. All I get in response is a roll of the eyes. I doubt that. You wouldn't be here if that was the case, you know. The girl's got a point, of course. But I'm not about to concede it. It's not that bad of a heart. Certainly can handle a little grease now and again. Yeah, sure. And handle a little running just fine, too. Emmy seems unconvinced. Not surprising. I haven't even managed to convince myself. Maybe. But if you're sleeping the... But not if you're sleeping the day away all the time. A devious look suddenly crosses her face. Of course, if you've been following a routine from the beginning, you wouldn't be in this situation. Hey, I've had a pretty eventful week, you know. For example, I almost died, there was a lot of meeting people, then I was on a roof for a while. That's no excuse for slacking off, you know. 
A little near-death experience is no excuse for skipping basic exercise. Like running in the mornings. Ba what? Excuse your crispy... Uh, I beg your Krispy Kreme fucking pardon? She nods as if something important has just been decided. So it's settled then. I've seen the error of your ways and I'm... And are willing to adhere... You've seen the error of your ways and are willing to adhere to my routine, right? I'll see you bright and early in the morning. Bitch, give me back my food! We'll be running, buddies? You know, you've already convinced me yesterday that this is a good idea. You don't need to convince me again. Not that I did a good job of being convinced. She's right about eating healthy after all, and I am ordering up something grossly unhealthy. But delicious! There are more important things than the There are more important than things than deliciousness, aren't there? Like staying alive? If Emmy weren't there browbeating me for my poor decisions, I'd probably Hey, wait a second. A sudden question springs to mind. Hey, why the hell have you taken such an interest in my well being? Emmy shrugs and grins at me. You're the new guy. I figured you don't have any friends yet, right? Besides, I've caused you trouble all week, right? I owe you for not getting angry. And I told the nurse I would anyway. Uh huh. Crazy little running girl wants to make me healthy. Well, I suppose there are worse fates. Okay, that sounds fine. Oh no, a cute, sexy, athletic tomboy girl wants to make you healthy and wants to spend time with you. Oh, the horror! The humanity! <laughs> Thanks for your concern. Tomorrow morning, then? I figure that ends the conversation, so I turn to leave. Not so fast. I feel a hand on my collar, and in a second I've been yanked backwards. Hey, no need to be so rough! What do you want now? Amy looks almost wounded by my annoyed question. I can use the company. Her eyes narrow. Besides, you were just gonna go try sneaking some more of that fried crap, weren't you? Well, I wasn't going to, but now that she mentions that, that would have been a really good idea. I was not. Another glare. Okay, maybe I was going to get a little. The glare continues. Okay, a lot. Jesus, I'm in danger. I'm a danger to myself and others, aren't I? Yes, you are. I get done ag and agreeing that I need to be healthier, and then immediately start considering the next unhealthy habit that comes my way. <laughs> I knew it. You can't be trusted. At least let him have one more thing before he has to fucking go on a diet. Jesus Christ, everyone has a cheat day. Besides, uh, I mean, he already paid for that, and you just tossed it. Exactly, motherfucker. That'll be that would be like again. if I got... That would be like if I got fast food and then my grandma, for some strange reason, thought I should share it even though I, you know, wasn't planning to and I didn't get enough to share. And then she decides to throw my fast food away and cook me something, which, you know, I like my grandma's cooking, but that doesn't mean you get to throw away my shit! Sorry. Got a little carried away there. <laughs> that actually happened, by the way. <laughs> I stole 15 bucks from her, and she never figured it out because she doesn't get to throw away my food. Now I definitely have to stick with you. This whole situation feels silly. I can only imagine what passerby, I, what passerby think of the sight of me being lectured by a tiny girl half my size. Oh yeah, because Emmy is the lolly of this game. Ow, she she's not even that short. Well, Hasao is like five foot ten. Okay. And Emmy is like five foot three, I think. Okay. And she's petite. Okay, yeah, but like when people say lolly, I think like literally like it's tiny as shit. Okay, but aren't you aware? This is the internet. If you don't look like a MILF, you're a lolly. Ugh. Welcome to the internet. Yeah, we all. Uh, it's either you have thick bazongas and people complain about it, or you don't have thick bazongas and people complain about it. There of is course. no winning. <laughs> Maybe I should just give up God now. forbid, different people with of different body types just fucking exist. I mean, like it's not like the game fetishizes any of the female characters in this game anyway. I mean, yeah, true. I mean, like you don't walk in on anybody wearing their underwear. Oh wait, except that one time, but that was there was a reason for it. Yeah. Yeah, because Ren was high as fuck on cough syrup. Was she actually high on cough syrup? Yep. Damn. Yeah, she. that's why she kissed us, because she was fucking high. 
Oh, okay. I thought you were referring to the. Never mind. That's right. No. Referring to the moment when we walked in on her, um, yeah, piddly winking herself. Yeah, but like, no, like the the first time we walked into her room. Okay, yeah. Yeah, in the dorm. Maybe I should just give up for now. Fine, do what you like. I sigh. Might as well make the best of this. What do you want to do? Let me think for a minute. Well, I promised Ren I'd stop by her mural. So let's do that. I confess I'm slightly curious how her mural turned out for myself, so again, I consider that there are worse fates. I give a nod of assent and find myself almost dragged bodily through the crowd as Emmy reaches our destination, races to our destination. By the time we reach the dorms, I can feel my heart pounding. Heart shouldn't, pound after just, shouldn't be pounding after just that. I take a few deep breaths, willing myself to calm down. I'm one of the most normal looking people in the school, but I still have to be here. Sometimes I almost wish I'd lost a hand or something. Then at least it'd be obvious mm. that I belong. But instead, I don't even look sick. Mm. Even now, trying to catch my breath, I just look out of shape. Even looks back and notices my state of distress. You're not going to die on me, are business. you? What? Is the Sal really that out of shape? I mean, he's been, like, well, he's been in the hospital for, like, what, like, a month or something? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's, and he even said, like, in um, in one of the other routes that he doesn't really, like, he used to play soccer, but, like, he didn't really do it out of love of the sport. He just kind of did it just to play with his friends, so he wasn't dead serious about exercising. So, uh, okay, you know, yeah. yeah, so, you know, like, he was all right before, but, like, he's got a little bit of muscle atrophy, so that... And that's probably the reason why. You're not going to die on me, are you? Please don't. Not yet. It'll be all my fault, and I don't want to deal with that kind of guilt. Besides, after last time, I really don't think I need to see that again. Especially because the nurse will totally <laughs> say it's all my fault. Nah. Amy, I can't believe you killed him. Nah, I'm fine. Guess I need to start running after all. And you wanted to keep eating your greasy whatever it is. It's takoyaki, Emmy. It's good shit. See? It's a good thing I found you, right? Yes, it was. Maybe. Of course, I don't add that I wouldn't be in the state if she hadn't dragged me across the festival grounds. Further conversation is interrupted by the sudden appearance of Ren. Oh, it's you. Hello, Amy. Hey, Rin. I brought us out along because he was going to give himself a heart attack. That was not. My objection goes unnoticed. We stopped by to see how the mural turned out. Rin nods slowly. Well, <clears throat> well, it's right there. You can see it pretty clearly. I find myself wondering how long Rin's been standing here in front of the mural. Has anyone even stopped by to look at it? Are we the first ones? Obviously, we're not the first to see it, of course. I mean, it's pretty big. You'd be hard-pressed not to see it. At the same time, I don't think anyone's actually talked to Ren about it. Anyone but us, that is. I feel compelled to say something. It looks pretty good. Hmm. I'm still not happy with how it turned out. But I guess it'll do. She seems almost resigned to it. I'm not sure what she expected as a result, but I guess she didn't quite get there. Uh -huh. I stand in front of the mural, taking it all in. I try my best to concentrate on the concentrate on the composition of the thing. It's actually fairly interesting. The colors like swoop. the gates of hell. <laughs> the colors swoop and blend together, drag me along with them. Is a dreamlike quality of the, to the whole thing that makes it makes me feel almost feel sleepy. I try hunting out some of the colors Emmy and I grab for her. Try as I might, I can't see any Prussian blue. Oh well, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. My feet start mm -hmm. to hurt, but Ren doesn't seem inclined to move on. Emmy speaks up. <clears throat> hey Ren, have you eaten? 
Of course. I can't survive otherwise. What about in the past five hours? Maybe. But I'm hungry again, so maybe that means I'm wrong. Emmy grins and clasps her hands together. Good. Clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. <clears throat> Good. Come get some food with us. Red nods in assent. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but we should hurry before they notice I'm gone. Somehow, I don't think they'd care. Whoever they are. As you, as we head back to the food stalls, I cast a long eye over the fried food. No, I better not. I'm pretty sure Emmy wouldn't let me anyway. Find a nice spot on the grass and sit to eat our purchases. Well, my purchases anyway. So somehow I wound up for paying, paying for all the food. Surprisingly, my unfried food is pretty good. Hmm. Silence falls as Emmy and I and Ren eat, as Remy and I eat, and Ren stares at something or other, occasionally taking a bite or two of her food. I finish my meal first and lay back on the grass. Hey, that's pretty good. Emmy glances up from her food. Tired as hell? A little, I guess. Well, don't oversleep or anything. And tomorrow morning, we start our morning runs, remember? Actually, that slipped my mind. I was actually just enjoying myself. Wandering around the festival with these two has actually been fun. Yeah, I'll set an alarm. You better be there. I'll get angry if you aren't. God forbid. I don't think God comes into it. Unless there's some kind of freak accident and your alarm clock shorts out. That might be rant that might be a random act of God. Well don't cause any random acts of God then. Plan forms Oh yeah. Mind. Zeus, strike me down if your wife Um Yeah, fuck it. I'm not even gonna go there because I don't want Zeus to strike me down and saying some fuck ass shit about his wife. Other than she's flat I don't think he cares. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, he cheats on, literally, he'll cheat on his wife with a fucking grape. Yeah. No. Strike me down, Zeus! You don't have the balls! He really doesn't. No, no balls! No dick, no, no balls. balls. And probably no butthole since this guy feeds on radiation. It's a plan that makes me feel kind of guilty, but I throw it in execution anyway. Damn it, I've earned a little fried food. Anyway, I'm going to start running tomorrow, right? So the actual routine all starts then, not now. Ergo, the dietary portion starts tomorrow too. Ergo, I can have something unhealthy today. A sort of final farewell to all the stuff I used to eat with wild abandon before the hospital. Actually, I suppose I should head back to my room. I had some homework to do, and if I'm going to run tomorrow in the morning, I should make it an early night. Oh no, she got on. Oh, she's pissed. She knows. This bitch angie. Those narrowed eyes again. You sure you're not just gonna sneak off and buy some of that fried stuff over there? Nah, I'm too full to bother now. I pat my stomach for emphasis. Besides, you two have cleaned me out anyway. Emmy giggles. It's a surprisingly pleasant sound. Another pang of guilt. She's got to know I'm lying to her, doesn't she? Or is she just that trusting? I feel kind of like a monster. All part of my master plan, Hisao. Well, I guess I'll see you in the morning then. Thanks for the food and for keeping us company. Here I thought she was doing me a favor. Rin nods in agreement. I won't say see you tomorrow, because that would be like predicting the future. And I'm pretty sure I can't do that. Okay. Bye, you two. I feel oddly be glad that I decided to leave my room today. Not a bad way to start my second week here, I suppose. Once I'm sure that I'm out of I'm out of Emmy's line of sight, I make a beeline for the food stands and buy some cake. At least not <laughs> bad, right? Slightly better than what I was planning to do. I feel a little bad about lying to Emmy though. She really does seem concerned about my health. I'm gonna get up to her somehow. Better head back to my room. Hey, I do have work to do. My book waits for me, and I flop onto my bed and read through the fireworks display. 
Eventually, all the walking around, or more accurately, running around, catches up with me. I really am out of shape. I mean, dragging me out in, in the morning to run might just be a good thing after all. It's something to look forward to. Oh, we got a booty shot. Why does that remind me of a fucking Final Fantasy Sonic X? <laughs> that is a thing I have not heard in a long time. Uh, I used to play that all the goddamn time in elementary school. Was that was that game ever finished? Uh, no. I, th I mean, I think it got like two more chapters, but after that, it, it just hasn't been finished yet. The creator's still working on it, though. Really now? Yeah, part of me wishes if it, like... You know, he kind of like just remade it and made like a full release or something. Creator's trans, you know. Trans woman. Oh, of the, uh, oh, Final Fantasy Sonic X? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I hope uh, she like remakes the entire game as like a full on oh. Sonic RPG. <laughs> Dead Act oh. 2 form. Yeah, that's a form, all right. It's a form I'd like to see more often. Well, I might see. My alarm's beeping, shatters the early morning quiet, and I find myself wondering where to find the motivation to rise. Class is still quite far off, but I agree to run with, Ren with Emmy in the morning. Really, I'm not that interested in running as a hobby, or even as a possible life-lengthening exercise. However, I feel like obligated to... Follow through on my promise to Remy yesterday, which is why I find myself throwing on some running shorts and a light t-shirt. The cool morning air caresses my face as the morning sunshine causes the dew on the grass to sparkle, nearly blinding me at first. As I make my way, my way down to the track, an ugly thought strikes me. What if this is some sort of joke Emmy's playing on me? Would that surprise me, really? Hell, I'd probably do it to the new guy too. At the very least, I'm sure Emmy and Ren have made a bet on whether or not it would actually show up. I feel a sense of trepidation as the track comes into view. You're late! It seems that Emmy's already here. A relief. According to my watch, we're both... Both are early, in fact. Damn, you got me there! <laughs> Emmy's sitting <laughs> on the bleachers, decked out in running gear, waiting somewhat patiently for me. I'm glad you're actually here. I was afraid that this was a joke or something. Nah, I never make someone get up that or get up early for nothing. Plus, Rain knows me 500 yen now, so she didn't think you'd actually show up. I knew it. Damn! I knew Nice to know Emmy was on my side, at least. Emmy hops off the bleachers and begins stretching out. He's remarkably lithe, almost like a dancer. I set out to stretch as well, but then I realized that I don't exactly remember how to stretch properly. It's been ages since I stretched for anything, if you don't count the one stint in my running last week. Even then, I don't think I've actually stretched beforehand. The specter of my long hospital stay rises up again. Can't say I was all that active before the hospital stay, though, so maybe I'm just feeling being morose. Emmy giggles as she watches me stretch out. No, 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 Hasao. You gotta hold it for longer than that. I'm trying. It kinda hurts a little. <laughs> it's cause you're out of shape. We've got some... Yeah, you've got some flexibility in you. Like this! Wait. You've got to get some flexibility in you. Fuck! I don't know how to read! To demonstrate, Emmy reaches down and puts her head through her legs. God Damn. bless you, Emmy. Wait a second. Puts her head through her legs. Isn't that... I'm putting up a visual, like, you're not gonna know what it is, is Josh, until you, like, you watch the episode yourself, but, like, you'll, you'll see what I mean. I actually think I know exactly what you're talking about. What am I talking about? It's when people, like, take their, take their, um, like, they literally take their legs and they put it behind their head. Like, I think it's like a yoga pose or something. Can't exactly, hold on, I'm gonna... Like, like the one where like they have like curling their back legs so that like the tips of their 
So that like it looks like that the tips of their toes are like right above their head, right? Yeah. That wasn't exactly the visual I was actually I was thinking of though. Like the feet oh. are still on the ground. Oh. Yeah, but like he's bending back so far, like he's curling around and he's poking the front of his head head through the bottom of his feet. Mm. I'll give you a hint. Boar head. Boar head? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, give me a minute. Okay. I'll be right back. You All keep right. reading. I see. Is that the sort of thing I should strive for? Of course. Flexibility is important for any runner. You'll be able to go faster the more you stretch out. That makes no sense to me, but Emmy seems to believe it's true. With Emmy's help, I managed to stretch myself out properly. I can't help but notice that when she thinks about how to explain things to me, her mouth scrunches up in concentration. It's adorable. Not bad, Hissau. Come on, we better start running. We'll start off with just a mile, okay? That's four laps around the track. Got it? Sounds fine to me. Shouldn't be too hard, right? A hazy memory of running a mile for gym class surfaces in my mind. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Emmy seems pretty set. Emmy sets at a pretty good pace, and I fall behind her. Try to keep up, okay, Hitsal? Roger. We find the first curve of that incident, though I can already feel my heart rates increasing slightly. By the second curve, I started to breathe through my mouth. Emmy doesn't seem to be breaking a sweat. As if to punctuate her superiority, she turns around and starts running backwards. Doing okay, Hitsal? Never. Better. Oh, really? Maybe I should speed up then, hmm? No. No, I wouldn't want you to overexert yourself. The heavy panting and wheezing makes the statement less convincing than I had hoped, and he simply smiles and turns around again. You're the boss of Sal. We'll stay at this pace. <coughs> I get the feeling I'm being mocked. If I weren't in such terrible shape, I'd probably feel offended. By the third lap, my breath is coming in ragged gasps. I'm also awash in my own sweat. Gross. We round the curve and start our fourth lap, and Emmy looks back at me with a grin. Here we go! She takes off at blinding speed while I stubbornly stick to my slower pace. By the time I Here get we go! go! <laughs> By the time I get to the first turn, she's already rounding the second. As I struggle across the back stretch, Emmy continues running and catches up to me. Come on, Sal, you can do it. I'd answer her, but I'm too focused on getting air into my lungs and ignoring the, bur and the burning in my leg muscles. Part of me wants to say something like, maybe you can, but I'm about to die here. But again, I doubt I can actually form words right now. Emmy keeps pace with me as I round the second turn and cross the finish line. Her sprint seems to have gotten her sweating. Because I can actually see her shirt slightly turn slightly translucent. It mm. seems she wears a black sports bra. Why are you paying attention to that, Hisao? Hey, he needs some motivation. I'd need some, too. I feel a vague stab of guilt for being the sort of guy that stares at a girl's chest, but my legs and chest are hurting so badly I can't bring myself to care that much. True. I wouldn't be able to care either. Not bad for a first effort, Sal. <laughs> kind of you to say so. I mean, seems to be, if not out of breath, at least breathing a little more heavily than she was before we started running. It must have been the sprint that did that. Hey, I got a few sprints in. Man, you should walk around the track to cool down. Then we can stretch out and we'll be all done, okay? Sounds great. My legs are on fire, my breathing is still heavy. But surprisingly, my heart seems to be taking the strain well. What a triumph of medical science, I suppose. You should put your hands behind you know, your hands behind your head. It makes it easier to catch your breath. That is actually a real technique. Wait, really? Yeah. Huh. Surprisingly, she's right. I begin to stroll the track, happy to feel my breath coming back to me. There's a blur as Emmy sprints by me. Watching her run is absolutely fascinating. It's not just because she's on prosthetics, though that is interesting. The really interesting thing is the way her face changes. I can only catch glimpses of it as she runs by, but her eyes just seem to come alive with a sort of fierce joy. As if there's nothing else in the world but her and the track. 
By the time I've gotten to the final stretch, Emmy seems to finish her sprinting. She's breathing heavily now, and she's wearing a satisfied grin on her face. She waves at me cheerily as I, as I near her. Feeling better, right? Actually, yeah. Do you want to take another lap around with me? I've got to cool down too, you know. Part of me would rather sit down and not move, but something tells me that would be a bad idea. Besides, if I sit down, there may be no getting back up again. Sure, why not? Emmy's got her hands behind her head now as well, which makes her seem very relaxed. The positioning of her arms also pulls her shirt upwards ever so slightly that I can see a, a small strip of her belly. God damn it! I do my best to act like a gentle, to act a gentleman and not look, but the contrast of her skin against her red running shorts is rather arresting. So, how do you feel, Sal? Surprisingly good, actually. I'm sore and tired, but surprisingly good. As soon as I say it, I realize it's true. Sure, part of me wants to lay down and die, but I feel like I've accomplished something. It's almost like a glow throughout my body that persists despite the soreness. Yeah, that's the runner's high. Runner's high? Yeah, it has something to do with adrenaline. I mean, thanks for a moment as we walk, trying to remember. Then she shrugs and then she shrugs and grins at me. Actually, I don't actually remember. Though it's good. it's feeling, although it's a good feeling though, isn't it? Just like cocaine. It's like running down a dream. Insert Family Guy joke. What you don't remember? That one episode where Brian decided that his and that he wanted to like get with this like uh, runner lady that goes around the neighborhood and he finds out about the runner's high and then it, like it cuts to him like literally getting high, like going on a high while Tom Petty's running down a dream starts playing okay sorry my microphone got a little fucked oh you say something uh... family guy reference yeah. Brian Griffin episode where he wants to date hey, this uh, woman who runs around the neighborhood Tom Petty's running down a dream segment Oh, yeah, I remember that episode. Yeah, that. Hmm. I don't have that on my soundboard. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Your microphone sex. peaked. Better than sex, right? my mouth to respond shortly before processing what she just said. I wouldn't Emmy, go that far. Emmy watches my face for a few moments before bursting into laughter. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I couldn't resist. You're too easy. Why did I agree to run with you again? Emmy just laughs harder. She takes a hold of my forearm and tilts it, allowing her to get a better view of my, you know, my watch. Her face changes the moment she sees the time. Oh no, we better get a move on, Sal. Class is in an hour, and I need a shower. I should probably do that as well. I didn't see the nurse, too. Maybe he'll write a note for me being late. Hey, why do you need to see the nurse? I mean, points for her prosthetics as if that would explain everything. It's important to check for irritation. You know, from sweat or friction or anything. Normally, I only go after practice, but if we are going to be doing these morning runs, then I guess I'll only see him twice a day. Wait, so Emmy has only started doing these runs since I showed up? If it's more convenient for you to run with me at a later time. Don't be silly. I've been meaning to start running in the morning for a while now. If I didn't have a partner to run with, I'd likely keep I'd be less likely to keep up the routine. It's always hard to blow off a commitment when you're going to let someone down, you know? So you'll be my running partner for the mornings. We both need the exercise, so it all works out, don't you think? Yeah, perfect. Did it have to be me, though? Well, I guess I can't complain too much. Emmy's pretty fun to hang out with. She's right. I do need the exercise. Doctor's orders, even. Oh, God, a pretty girl wants to spend time with me. Oh! Oh! I mean, he's not complaining, though. Okay, fine. Emmy waves a quick goodbye to me. Right, I'm off. Come have lunch with us, okay? What? Lunch, you know, the meal in the middle of the day, come and have it with us. Where? The rooftop. Rin likes it up there. When? 
Lunchtime, when else? That was a silly question. Yeah, but I sort of felt the need to ask all three for completeness' sake. Emmy laughs and grins. I don't think I've ever seen a girl smile so much before. What about it, Sal? See ya. And this is why I think Emmy is the canon love interest. Hmm. Because all his Sal describes her as is just, she's adorable. You know, it, makes feels, sense. it feels a little more bog standard that way. Although Ren easily has the better writing thing from what I've seen so far. Because it took him a while to realize that he was into her. So it felt a bit yeah. more realistic. Yeah, Ren's over there like me and the almost ableist bitch I pulled by being autistic. <laughs> With that, she takes off like a shot from the school building. I guess she's going to see the nurse first. Hurry back to my room and hop in the shower, only to find that the water takes a while to heat up. The shock of the cold water nearly kills me. I managed to warm the water a bit and spend some quality time feeling my muscles loosen. My, heart my Kenji senses are tingling. My heart, surprisingly, feels at least bothered by the run. I suppose that's a good thing, even if it does make me feel like a bit of a wuss. I mean, at least I'd have an excuse beyond I'm out of shape if my heart were bothering me. I guess I'll have to keep this running thing up. Otherwise, I'm sure Emmy would, won't let me hear the end of it. It's only after I get out and dry myself off that I realize that I've only ten minutes left to put my clothes on and get to class. Crap. The hands of the clock finally set me free from the tedium of yet another fun-filled class. Getting up from my seat proves to be more of a problem than I anticipated. Those are killing me from the morning's run. Maybe doing these with Emmy isn't such a hot idea after all. Still, the run's giving me a hell of an appetite. <laughs> Halfway down the hallway to the cafeteria when I remember where I've got my lunch with me. My parents saw fit to provide me with some prepackaged stuff when I moved in. Good thing, too. The hallway is packed with students headed for the cafeteria. Going back is like swimming upstream, but I've got an appointment to keep up on the rooftop. Takes me a moment to find the staircase leading up to the rooftop, but I'm willing to bet that Emmy and Ren aren't up there by now, anyway. In fact, I think I saw Emmy among the bodies in the hallway headed for the cafeteria. I step out of the door into the, into the roof and take a deep breath. Fresh air blowing against my face and body almost make my legs hurt less. Hmm. Maybe if I'm upside down... Part of me wants to be surprised that Ren's already up here. What's that going to accomplish? Things in the clouds. Couldn't you just look at them right side up? Mm. Rin rolls her eyes in something approaching exasperation. Then I wouldn't get a new perspective. Is Upside Down really a new perspective? Aha! Caught her off guard. Rin looks pensive. You may have a point. Maybe sideways. As Ren lays down on the bench to look at the sky, I give up. Fortunately, Emmy chooses that moment to burst through the door carrying two bags. She nearly takes the door off its hinges. Sorry it took me so long. There were a ton of people in line. She drops the first bag in front of Ren and, she takes a seat and takes a seat on the bench next to her. You buy Ren's lunch for her? Sometimes, yeah. I'd have Ren buy my lunch for me in return, but I'm not sure how she'd carry it. Plus, I'd never buy her Plus. lunch. <laughs> Plus, I'd never buy her lunch. Ren's if Ren's offended by Emmy's comment, she doesn't show it. Emmy sniffs. How ungrateful of you. I'm not sure whether the two are joking with one another or if I'm witnessing the beginnings of a cat fight. The two girls stare at one another for a few tense moments before breaking into smiles. Hey, Emmy, do you think being upside down is a new perspective of things? Didn't I already have this conversation? Emmy looks thoughtfully, apparently giving the question some thought. After a deep and profound pause, she speaks. I have no idea. Well, at least she's as lost as I am. Hey, Hassau. It's kind of hard not to be lost around Rin. Yeah. Hey, Hassau. You're coming to the track meet, right? Question comes out of the blue and catches me off guard. Um, I don't know yet. Honestly, Hassau, after all we were... 
after I went through all the trouble of letting you run with me in the morning, you won't even show up on my track meet. Wasn't she the one who asked me to run with her? Actually, she didn't even give me a choice in the matter. Wait, no, I didn't say that. She beams at me as if I had just agreed to give her a million dollars. So you will come with me after all. That's great. I didn't say that either. I'll be going too. So I'll make sure he comes, Emmy. Giggity. Good idea, Ren. Maybe we can get some food or something for after the meet's over. I feel like I've just been conned. Not by these two. Hey. More like by some outside force pushing me irrevocably toward my destiny. Oh shit, he knows about us. We have to hide. Or maybe, maybe I shouldn't read books that feature conspiracy theories so heavily. Otherwise, I might end up oh, sounding like Kenji. Oh, thank goodness. All right, we're fine, Thomas. Still, I suppose I've got to show up now. I don't think that I could stand it against both of them being disappointed. I'd never hear the end of it. So when's it again? Next week, silly. I just told you a few days ago. No, you didn't. I forgot? Well, you won't forget to come, though, will, will you? Of course I won't. Oh, let me make, take an, make a note on a calendar or something. Rin nods sagely. That's probably... <laughs> That's probably a good idea, you know. Unless time changes its course. It can do that? Rin gives a non-committal shrug. <coughs> it hasn't yet, but you never know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! This time, it's Emmy who gives a shrug. I suppose it can't be helped if it happens. Not unless you're a time traveler or something. I don't actually think that could happen. Do you? Hmm. That's you, buddy. I don't think we do. Do we? Ren shrugs. It seems to be your default response to everything. I suppose not, but I reserve the right to change my opinion at a moment's notice. For Rin, this statement makes a disturbing amount of sense. The fact that I realize this now frightens me a bit. I wonder if Emmy gets this feeling. Rin is just me for real. She's literally me for real. If she doesn't, if she does, if she's not showing it though, Emmy merely nods. As expected. What is that supposed to mean? This time, it's Emmy who shrugs. It's like she's using Rin's own weapons against her. Funny. Your response is the sort of thing I'd expect from you, that's all. Am I really that predictable? Hmm. Emmy smile well, seems to border on gloating. <clears throat> nah, it's just that your unpredictability is pretty predictable. You must expect the unexpected. Alright. <clears throat> well, that's alright then. I don't get the chance to see whether Ren's being serious or not as the bell rings. Well, saved by the bell. <laughs> so, what's how's that song? Something someone told me life was gonna be this way. I didn't notice the lunch period slipping by at all. Hanging out with these two is far too interesting. Emmy jumps up, a look of panic on her face. Oh no! I need to stay. I had to stop by my room to pick up my notebook for the next class. Don't you wish you had a time machine now? <laughs> Rin seems rather smug as she delivers this line, like she'd just won an argument. Emmy ignores Rin's comment. I would too. Sorry, Sal, but could you... 
but could you make sure our garbage gets thrown away? I usually clean up myself, but I gotta run. Sure. No gotta blast! <laughs> Trip through the stars and buying candy to buy bars. candy bars. It's like a kid with a knack for adventure. Invention. I thought it was adventure. Fuck, for the longest time. <laughs> a kid with a knack for invention. Because he's got a super powered no, mind. A, a mechanical canine. canine. Yeah. Something, something with a quest for destruction. Rescues the day from pure destruction. I never, dude. I've the last time I watched Jimmy Jimmy Neutron, I was like six years old, dude. Ugh. Sure, no problem. I mean, darts away with urgency. Yeah, I'm starting to expect from her. I don't bother asking Ren why she couldn't help. She seems already she's be preoccupied with something else entirely as she wanders off. She's probably used to Emmy taking care of cleanup, and for some reason I doubt Emmy's ever raised an issue with her. Cleaning up from lunch doesn't take long, so I have plenty of time to toss our garbage and get them to class. Misha greets me with a wave and a devious grin as I walk through the door. Didn't see you in the cap. Fuck! Didn't see you in the cafeteria, Hitchan. Yeah, I decided it was too crowded there. Misha's grin gets even wider. Oh, really? Are you sure you weren't participating in an illicit rendezvous? What? What are you talking about? A girl with my chest size knows when a guy is trying to <laughs> get in with somebody. You were on the roof, right? With both Ren and Emmy, no less? You Casanova, you. We just had lunch, that's all. Misha bursts into laughter, drawing the attention of several of my classmates. <laughs> You're so adorable when you blush like that, John. She gives me a conspiratorial wink. Don't worry, your secret's safe with me. You're I it's good for you that you're allowed to have casual threesomes on the roof. Yeah, I get it. One doesn't have arms, one doesn't have legs. You need the best of both worlds for... <laughs> God damn it, I can't finish saying that without laughing. Ugh. Keep her going. There's no secret. Oh. Misha seems disappointed and then brightens up again. Time will tell. There's no harem route in this game, Misha. Which sucks, that'd be awesome. No, it wouldn't, because it goes against the entire point. I get it, I get it, but imagine if there was like an entire joke ending where you could get a harem route and then you wake up and it's literally just Hassau after the first week and he had a fucking dream about all this shit. Actually, there is an ending like that. It's the one where he throws himself off the roof. Okay, yeah, okay, I hear you. I don't know what the hell she's talking about, but blessedly our teacher comes in and the class starts. Another day of class has finally dragged itself to a close. Unexpectedly, I managed to stay awake for the whole day. Pretty sure that counts as a miracle. My legs seem unwilling to stand up for a moment. I guess the run's got I guess the run took a lot out of me. Hmm. I head down the hallway to and make my way to my room. I sit down and half-heartedly chip away at my homework for a while, feeling like a vulture picking at a particularly unsavory carcass. It knows that this is what it wants. It knows this is what it eats, but it's not sure that it shouldn't be ordering takeout instead. I don't think I can take this, but it's important to get my work done. Let's see. What was I supposed to be looking over again? I know it's a losing battle, but I fight it anyway. Halfway through my math homework, I put my pencil down. This isn't working. I need a distraction. Unfortunately, my options for distractions are rather slim. I'm not in the mood to read right now. Kenji is, unusually, out of his room at the moment. If I go to the student council room, I'll just end up doing work for those two. And heaven only knows where everyone else is, except for... Well, I suppose that's an option. 
I grab my shoes and head for the track. Emmy's probably down there. Track practice is and just ending as I arrive to the track. What? No, I was going to say that maybe we should end it off like soon because we've been recording for over an hour and a half. Yeah, actually, why don't we just call it here? Yep. We'll keep up with Emmy and her thick cheeks next time on Katawa Sosha Zikai. <laughs> All right, Ivan the Velvet Sparrow. You're supposed to be you have been, insert your username here. Oh, for Christ's sake. And I am Heart Hero 456 Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see and you in I the hope... next one. Bye, guys. Bye.